Hello everyone and welcome back. Feedly Gentleman from Central Ontario, Canada is back once again for another whiskey review. I know that many of you are looking forward to it and I know that many of you are subscribed to the channel just for the whiskey reviews. Today will be whiskey review number five and we have covered um, a few local Ontario drams so far and we are not quite out of the province yet um, my palate and my wallet and my preference has been uh, local thus far and today is not going to change uh, just yet we are looking at a local distillery and the dram that we are going to be talking about today will be lot number 40 by Corby Spirit and Wine so uh, my Interesting little preamble here will be uh, just like it was in the other reviews. And if you have not seen my other reviews, I do highly encourage you. They are, I would like to think, some of my best videos. A lot of my other videos are maybe a little bit uh, silly or uh, more sort of personal vloggy things. But here today we're going to talk about spirit and we're going to be a little bit serious but still have some fun. So I should say, I am a just an average dude. I consider myself to be a very average person. I have what I consider to be an average palate. Um, anything that I interpret, any of the notes or characteristics of the spirit are going to be my own, and I'm going to give you a very um, personalized look of how I taste it, how I perceive it. If, if it's not there for me, it's not there for me. I'm not going to say it. And also, I wanted to mention that I am not a brand ambassador or anything by any means. I am not attached to the brand at all. As you may have noticed, I don't even have any ads running anywhere on the video um, because I don't want to make money off this. This is just an interest and a hobby of mine that I would like to share. So on to the story part of it, on to uh, the part that interests me a lot, which is the history of the spirit. I find if I really like something, uh, I like to look into it, and especially there is uh, there's quite a good history, interesting history with uh, whiskey and many spirits, especially Canadian whiskeys, and uh, I just find them to be quite interesting and amusing, and I will share that now with you. So, story time. Lot number forty. Lot number forty is produced by Corby Spirit and Wine. They are a local producer. Um, they used to be produced in Corbyville, Ontario. Now everything is produced down in Windsor, Ontario. Uh, they even go so far as to say on their website that they try to use local grains and local ingredients as uh, much as possible, which I tip my hat to, uh, to them for that. That is a great thing. However, I should mention now that Corby uh, Spirit and Distillery is not owned by um, a uh, Canadian or Canadian corporation. They are owned by Perno Ricard. I hope I'm saying that right. I uh, fumbled it the first time. Perno Ricard SA. They are French from France, not our French uh, with the Putin, um, but the French from France. So, and uh, Corby Spirit produces quite a few different offerings. Some of the, uh, the, the grams and spirits that they produce include everything from Weiser's, Pike Creek. Uh, they are the North American producers of Lamb's Rum. They also produce Polar Ice Vodka. And then when you go overseas, they do uh, Red Breast, which I believe is a scotch. And they also own Jameson and Powers. So they have quite a uh, varied portfolio. As a company, Corby Spirit, uh, in some form or another, some iteration of it, uh, has been around since, I have it written down right here, 1859. So that is uh, a pretty old history uh, for any Canadian company to go all the way back to 1859. And then in 1918, they merged with Weiser's. So the uh, an interesting anecdote about this one is, uh, we will get into looking at the actual bottle itself. But on the bottle, there's this really, I, f I find this to be a uh, very uh, distinct and intricate, it's, it's not an etching, it's an embossment actually, but you can see there's, there's the picture of a still, a copper pot still, and then they start naming off, this is basically an ingredient list, and that's actually on the bottle itself. So Lot 40 is based off of, uh, according to their website, it is based off of a pioneer um, 
blend, a pioneer recipe uh, of a, an individual who was native to Canada many, 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 many years ago, probably back around the iteration of the company itself, so somewhere around 1859, 1800s, and his name is Joshua Booth. So the original recipe goes all the way back to Joshua Booth on his lot somewhere near uh, the GTA. And something with the number, uh, his lot was number 40, I think, for Joshua Booth. And uh, a very interesting thing to me was that uh, during the 1990s, Corby Spirit came at the Canadian whiskey scene with uh, the mindset of trying to produce uh, a few higher-end Canadian whiskies, as many Canadian whiskies are, and I think mistakenly, seen as only mixers. So they wanted to set out to produce some premium whiskies. And lot number 40 was one of them, and one of the master blenders at the time of its inception, this was somewhere around the early 90s, actually was a relative, a distant relative of this Joshua Booth fellow. So I, I thought that was quite fitting, that sort of uh, what goes around comes around, and the uh, the great-great-grandson of, of Joshua perhaps was involved in uh, bringing back such a wonderful spirit. So... Let's have a look at the uh, the actual bottle itself. I think it is quite a handsome bottle. I really like, I don't know why, and it shouldn't matter, but I like this cork pop stopper that they put on there. I actually should have poured this before, but I still have more rambling to go on about. So we will pour ourselves a reasonable and responsible dram. Is that beautiful color? Pour that out, and we will let that breathe for a few minutes as I continue onward. Set that off to the side. Wet my whistle. So the bottling. It is a single copper pot still. Uh, they advertise that very vehemently. A single copper pot still. It is a large copper pot still. I forget the exact volume of it, but I believe it's somewhere in around, I think, 12,000 liters. This is a big still. The bottling is a blend of rye and a little bit of malted rye. It is bottled at 43% alcohol, so it should have that little bit of extra kick and a little bit extra flavor. And this is a non-age statement whiskey. Now, one of the reasons that this review took me a bit of a while to get out is because I, well, I can say up front, I really like this whiskey. I don't review whiskey if I don't like it because... Um, Quite frankly, even if it's not my cup of tea, uh, this is still a company. There's still, uh, especially for Canadian whiskeys, like that means they're employing uh, all manner of people in Canada. And uh, I don't want to do anything uh, to interrupt any of that. Um, I, I just want to share with people what I find uh, that I like. So this this is a really good whiskey, though. I, I really, really enjoy this one. So I'm going to be a little bit biased with... Uh, with any of my opinions, um, but I like what I like. So with this particular spirit, one of the reasons that it took me a bit of a while to get this review out is the fact that A, I've been busy, and B, I wanted to get a few things straight right from the producer themselves. So I actually contacted them, I contacted a couple people because it was taking a little bit of a while to get back to me, but eventually they did, and I got a couple sort of choice questions Things that uh, the average person who's just going to pull a bottle of liquor off the middle shelf um, probably wouldn't be asking. But uh, someone such as myself who's been doing a little bit of research and has done a couple of these reviews, I made sure to ask sort of the tough questions. They didn't want to answer all of them, which is fine. That's understandable. But I did get quite a few answers that um, I really liked. One was we're going into the barrel now, and I am checking my notes. I have all these different marks as to uh, what the next topic is going to be. The barrel for this um, is interesting and a little bit different from all the other whiskeys that I have, but not that different for North American 100% ryes like this one. It is a new oak barrel. Now this is completely different than any of the other spirits I've reviewed thus far. You'll find if you're looking into it that many Canadian whiskeys are done in uh, second or third run barrels, and quite often they're ex-bourbon casks, but these are new oak barrels. I could not find out precisely if they were charred, but I do know that uh, the oak is not aged or pre-used. 
And the uh, one of the other things that I was quite interested in was when you're looking at the color of this. Now, if you're familiar with my reviews, you'll be familiar with the fact that I am a proponent of listing everything in the bottle on the bottle, just like we do with any other fluid uh, that you ingest in Canada. If there are ingredients in pop, I expect the ingredients to be in there. But with whiskey, sometimes they can throw a little bit of colorant in there. Now, the colorant, it's not poisonous, it's, it's not toxic, but if there's something added in there, some extra color, it's called E150A, it's a caramel colorant. I feel that should be on the bottle. Now, this particular one doesn't advertise it one way or the other. Quite typically, if they don't, especially with scotches, it means that it's in there. But I contacted them to ask, and this beauty is 100% spirit only. There is no E150A colorant in there at all, and it is a beautiful color. Now, I was really interested, too, because based on taste and color, it doesn't seem like a non-age statement whiskey to me. Now, non-age statement whiskey in Canada, that means that it's likely only three years old. I'm sure there are components in this, quite uh, possibly the backing of it is going to be a three-year-old spirit, but it just doesn't taste like a three-year-old spirit. And I feel comfortable enough to say that having had 10 12-year-old drams, uh, Canadian whiskey, scotches, I've sort of gotten uh, an understanding of how the, uh, the barrel maturation imparts the different characters on the spirit. And this one just doesn't taste like a three-year-old to me. I've tasted many three-year-olds, and I don't mind them, to be perfectly honest. They all have their place in time. But after asking the distiller, they did get back to me, and they said that there are components in this particular spirit that are six and nine years old. So um, this is not a, a six or nine-year-old spirit. The youngest is going to be three, but there are older spirits in the blend, and I think that really comes through in the tasting. Which, uh, yeah, without further ado, I think we will get into. So this has had a little bit of time to breathe. There's some beautiful, beautifully distinguished legs, I find, on this one. I don't know if that's showing up that well, but it looks really, 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 really sensual in the glass. I like it. I was supposed to nose that first. But as you could see, I was uh, I was preoccupied. Oh, this one smells good. So, on the nose, I get notes of light, light, Baking spices, things I attribute to baking spices, clove, maybe allspice, butter toffee, sweet grains, earthy, earthy, almost mossy, uh, like wood, oak, definite hints of malt. And, and 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 butterscotch for sure butterscotch now here's a trick because i have just hyper saturated my olfactory senses with the smell of the spirit these are just uh roasted coffee beans i learned this trick from my local tobacconist actually and you get these coffee beans these are from muskoka roastery this uh, this blend is called black Lair. black Lair? black bear this is the one that I, uh, I drink on most Sunday mornings. If any of you follow me on my Instagram, um, I usually post a picture of my Sunday morning coffee and maybe a cigar or whatever I might be uh, enjoying at that moment. Oh, beautiful. I love the smell of coffee. It really opens up your uh, olfactory senses again, though. There is a little hint of spirit, but uh, that's that's not a bad thing. It's just on the back, and it's definitely not cloying. It doesn't burn you. Now, again, this is, an, this is a non-age statement whiskey, but it smells really good. Oh, 
on the palette, one of the first things that hit me after I sit on that for a while is toasted oats. Toasted oats, malts and grain, sweet ginger. Like a spicy clove, a touch of pepper, white pepper on the tip of the tongue, but it's not, it's not hot. I would call it warm. Hints of butter toffee, very smooth butter toffee, but it reminds me of something like a score bar. If you're familiar with a score bar, I bet you this would go great with a score bar. And even though I'm not sure if the barrels are charred, uh, I, I couldn't get that information in the time for the review, but there is almost like a smokiness to it, like a smokiness that I would impart to, uh, to a charred oak. For sure. This is a good whiskey. It's warm, smooth on the palate. Finish almost like sweet grasses. And I associate it with mowed lawn. I have a lot of weeds in my lawn. I have a lot of things like clover. A bit of a floral note, actually. I um, don't recall if I mentioned that, but there is there is a bit of a floral note in the in the the nose of it, like spring flowers. You got to search for it a little bit, but it's there. Something like sweet clover, and that really comes through. I find in uh, the finish, like sweet grasses, mowed lawn. Sweet clover, surprisingly mild, malty and toasty grains. And then it leaves you with a nice mild spice and a little something like cinnamon and orange zest. So it says right here, my final impressions. I literally wrote delicious. And really good. This would be a shame to mix, in my opinion. Um, the uh, Canadian behind the helm of uh, this particular uh, spirit, his name is Don Livermore. He is on Instagram and all kinds of social media. He's known as the Whiskey Doc because he actually has his PhD in distilling. These people at Corby Spirits, lot number 40, they know what they're doing. I feel like this one is dialed in just perfectly. If you are the kind of person that you like to have it with a bit of water, please, I encourage you to do so. Enjoy it the way that you enjoy it. But I find this one is perfect just the way it is. 43% um, alcohol volume for bottling. It's really good. They have this one, to me, dialed right in where it needs to be. I would consider this a premium whiskey. For sure I would. It's really good. It's only $39.99 Canadian a bottle, though. For that price, this is still, in in my mind, a middle shelf whiskey coming along this uh, my my middle shelf review series. Um, but this is this is a premium middle shelf bottle. It really is. This is a good one. And I would not mix this uh, with with water or coke or anything like that, as I had mentioned. But the one thing that I would do is if you have some dark chocolate, like an eighty five percent cacao chocolate, take a little bite of that. Let it sit on your palate. Let it melt on your tongue. Take another sip like this. And with that chocolate on your tongue, I guarantee you that flavor will come back again. It's like ginger honey, and it's like flower nectar just melting down the back of your tongue. It's so good. Give that one a try for sure. So I hope you've enjoyed the review. If you have, uh, I hope that you subscribe to the channel. You can follow me. I post a lot of things on Instagram now. I do also have Twitter and Facebook. I post things to there. But if you really want to see updates and kind of just what I'm doing, I would suggest going to Instagram. That seems to be the way that I am uh, going. It's a little bit easier for me to post. Uh, I apologize for the amount of time that it took me to get this one out, but I hope that it brought some value to you and that uh, you enjoyed it. And I hope you were entertained. Anyways, Beardly Gentleman is going to be signing off, and I hope that you have a great week and a great rest of your day or night, wherever you may be.
Spirited Gentleman, out. Thank you.